Okay, so this is going to be a very brief little introduction to the dot product as we use it in our study of physics. And then we'll do a quick example with one of the physical quantities that uses the dot product in its derivation. So the dot product is one way that we do vector multiplication. And it's the vector multiplication that is the allows us to combine two vectors, so multiply two vectors, and end up with a scalar. And the physical quantity that we're going to use as our example of what uses this is the physical quantity of work. So work is a scalar quantity, but it's the result of two vectors as they interact with one another. First, let's represent the dot product. And the dot product, if I want to have vector A and I want to multiply it in the format of the dot product for vector B, I'm going to represent that with a heavy dot between vectors A and B. And that's going to give me my resultant C, which again is not a vector, it's a scalar quantity. So two vectors resulting in a scalar. In order to get the magnitude of that scalar quantity, and magnitude is the only thing we're interested in, the mathematical derivation of that dot product is the magnitude of vector A times the magnitude of vector B times the cosine of the angle between the two vectors, A and B. That will give us vector C. So let's take a look at an example, and we'll use the idea of work for that purpose. Work is the dot product between the force applied on an object and the displacement over which that force occurs. So let's imagine that I have a force acting in the horizontal direction. And that force acts over a distance, a displacement, excuse me, also in the horizontal direction. The work done on that object that is moving through that displacement is found by the dot product between the force and the displacement. So if I look at the direction of these two and the magnitude of these two, I will find that my dot product, my resultant work, is the magnitude of the force times the magnitude of the displacement times the cosine of the angle between the force and the displacement. So if I look at how these two are angled with one another, they're in the same direction. The angle between the force and the displacement is zero degrees. So my work, this is equal to my work, my work then is going to be the force I'm going to write it in another mathematical representation so we get used to seeing it, times the distance now of the magnitude of my displacement times the cosine of zero, which we know to be equal to one. And that then is my work. So if my force is five newtons and I apply that five newtons on my object over a distance of two meters, five times two times the cosine in this direction times the cosine of one is going to give me 10 joules of work. What if the angle isn't straight, isn't at zero or 90 degrees? I'm sorry, or 180 degrees, if it's not in the same dimension. That's where that, that angle between the two starts to come into play. So if I have an image, if I have an object, and in this case I'm going to draw a picture to make it a little bit clearer. Let's imagine that I have a box and I am pulling the box along by a rope that's angled up and to the right. So let's say this is an angle of 25 degrees. And I pull that box through a displacement along a horizontal plane of three meters. And let's so we can do a full problem, say the force is equal to five newtons. All right, 
Well, I want to determine the work done on this box by that force. So I'm going to take the dot product of the force and the displacement. The magnitude of the force is 5. The magnitude of the displacement is 3. And then I want to take the cosine of the angle between the force and the displacement. If the displacement is along the horizontal direction, so I'm moving it in that direction, the angle between these two vectors is 25 degrees. So this angle is 25 degrees, and that's going to be my work. So 5 times 3 is 15 times the cosine of 25 degrees, and that is equal to 15 times the cosine of 25. That is equal to 13.6 joules. All right. So the work done on this box by that force is the dot product between the force and the displacement. That's represented by looking at the magnitudes times the cosine of the angle between those two vectors to get my scalar quantity. That's a brief introduction to the dot product. Good job.